Hey guys, welcome to another Cooking with Cocktails. It's me, T. Today we are visiting old school meals yet again. We are going to do some meatloaf. Our sides are going to be corn on the cob. We're going to do some sweet potatoes in the oven and probably a fresh green salad. If you are interested in seeing how I make our meatloaf, stick around. First we're going to cut up the ingredients that go inside the meatloaf for the filling. That's going to be the onion, green pepper, parsley, and garlic. After we dice all that up, we're going to put the onion, bell pepper, and garlic in the pan so that it can like start to sweat out and, and start to get translucent. Then we are going to make our meatloaf, you know, season it up, add the parsley to it. Once this is cool, we're going to add that to it. We're going to pop that baby in the oven. While that's in the oven, we're going to make our sauce. What do you put on your sauce, like for your topping? Some people just put ketchup. I'm not a ketchup girl. Sometimes I just do brown sugar, ketchup, and vinegar. But then sometimes when I feel a little fancy, like today, I use Dijon mustard, Worcester sauce, tomato paste, barbecue sauce, and ketchup, and brown sugar, and black pepper. I know it's a lot. Um, but it's so good, so you have to try it. And I really don't have a lot of measurements for that, so... I'll put the ingredients on the screen, but I won't list out measurements for anything because I do this by eye. So, um, my shirt looks crazy. Is it hot where y'all are? I know that had nothing to do with what I was talking about. Let's get into cooking this meal. Let's get a knife. And I hope my little thing don't fall because it be falling down sometimes. All right, we're going to go ahead and cut this bell pepper up. Ooh, this knife. Oh, I was going to say, this knife ain't as, as sharp as I thought it was. We're going to get this all diced up. And then we are going to get our onion cut up. How y'all doing? How are you doing today? I hope y'all are fine. Um, and listen, I think I might have asked y'all this before, but I'm going to ask again. If you have any recipes or any meal ideas that you'd like to see me cooking for our Wednesday series of cooking with cocktails, talk to you. cooking with cocktails, please let me know. Please let me know. And listen, I y'all know I don't I'm not doing meat, so I won't be eating the meatloaf. But y'all, let me tell you, I'm gonna tell you who cooks some bomb meatloaf. My mother. She makes the absolute best meatloaf ever ever hear me say it my mom's meatloaf the absolute best um so yeah um oh i wanted to say uh for my meat that i'm using i am using ground chicken today sometimes it's ground turkey on the rare occasion it's ground beef and i'm just doing a rough chop to these green peppers no rhyme, no reason, no order. It's just as long as it's diced up, I'm good with that. Um, but I'm doing um, ground chicken today. And primarily because the ground chicken was on sale. Another thing that you could do if you don't want to use ground beef, you could mix the ground turkey and ground chicken if you want it to have like, you know, a little more substance to it if you want it a little thicker but i'm just using a pound of ground chicken and since i'm using one pound of meat i'm only going to use one egg as my part of my binder my other binder is going to be breadcrumbs today i'm using italian this cutting board is sliding all over the place and i know it's probably driving some people crazy but i'm sorry i'm fine with it so and on top of that i don't feel like going to get another towel to um put under it all right so our bell peppers are cut up now let's cut up our onion oh no let's go ahead and do the garlic but again drop down in the comments and tell me a if you even like meatloaf and b if you make meatloaf how do you make your meatloaf like do you do just plain meat season or do you add like um i know some people put celery in their meatloaf i've never done that and i've never eaten celery i've never eaten meatloaf that has celery in it but i have seen people cook meatloaf and add celery to it so how do you make your meatloaf and then i think i asked y'all this already but let me know how you make your um topping too like what you put on your topping i think that's gonna be enough garlic 
because I'm gonna start buying garlic paste because I hear a lot of people using garlic paste like for recipes um, and I know that you can use it in lieu of actually cutting up the garlic but y'all know I have said several times before homie over here loves some garlic so you see I'm using two cloves right um how was y'all's weekend how's your work week all of that good stuff how's everything going in your life in your life and for those of you who are new thanks for joining us for the family who has come back yet again i sure appreciate you you know i do i love you honey bunches of oats um and for all of those who are new this channel is not just about me cooking and making cocktails on Wednesdays. It is a lifestyle channel and I share different parts of my life. I share my gardening. I share like, you know, little trips here and there. Um, and they're not all out of the country. I, we travel locally a lot. So it'll be like travel. You may see some clothing hauls. You may see some, you know, some shop with me, some grocery, anything dealing with life. That is exactly what I share because, um, in my opinion, the way I feel, see it, life haul, life haul, <laughs> lifestyle channels are just about that life, your life, sharing different parts and not having to share like a lot of it, you know, being transparent but not oversharing. So that's what this channel is all about over here. So you'll see some skincare you're gonna see like you know i'm just sharing things that that bring me joy that's exactly what i'm sharing things that bring me joy all right i should have cut this skin off this onion before cutting it in high up but i did it um and I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest i don't really like turning on the oven when it's hot but is going on <laughs> it is going on today because it's rare that he actually knows what he wants to eat typically he'll be like i don't care just cook whatever i'll eat whatever but when he was like meatloaf i was like oh okay well meatloaf it is which makes it easy for me because then even though i had a list of things that I could cook like some of the ideas on the list were Cornish hen, um, lasagna, lasagna rolls. Like you know how you take your um, noodle for your lasagna and you fill it with the the meat and your your um, sauce and stuff, and then you roll them so you make individual lasagna rolls. Those are really good for uh, meal prep ideas. They're easy for transport. I got an onion skin on my finger. I know this is probably driving some people crazy the way I'm cutting this onion up because really it's starting to drive me crazy. My OCD is really starting to kick in right now. I I should have known better than to do this. But um, the lasagna roll-ups are super easy to make. They they spread throughout meals because you eat a eat two rolls and you're full. And the re recipe I think it makes like 12 to 14 rolls. I'm thinking about doing a um, seafood lasagna roll up and it won't be a lot of seafood. It's just going to be um, my um, shrimp and the seasonings and stuff like that. I've never put anything in it other than shrimp. I don't think I would want it with like any fish or nothing like that. But that, you know, those were some of the options. Just regular fruit, um, fruit roll ups, <laughs> regular um lasagna roll-ups or a pan of lasagna cornish hens um i had a couple other things up there all right let me get the pan on and put some avocado oil in it so it can start to heat up and i'm gonna transfer all of these vegetables or these are they herbs i think i don't know peppers are a fruit do know that but i'm going to transfer the peppers the onions and the garlic to the pan so that they can begin to cook then i'm going to put on my um no i'm gonna cut up the parsley then i'm gonna put gloves on so that we can get the meat together yeah i had a grand idea just now instead of baking the sweet potatoes i'm gonna boil them and i'm gonna make mashed sweet potatoes all right so um we can go ahead and put the peppers in here because it's only gonna be meat in here anyway 
so it doesn't matter if the you know the flavors of the peppers and stuff get in the bowl because it's gonna go in the meat eventually so again this is one bell pepper one half onion two cloves of garlic and we're gonna season it I'm gonna put a little bit of chicken bouillon in it because ground chicken I'm not sure if you ever cook with it but those who do they know it is not easy to season ground chicken it takes quite a bit to get a good some good flavoring to it so I'm just gonna use a little bit and this is um I like the, to get the powdered instead of the bouillon cubes so I'm just gonna put a little bit of bouillon in it and also oh I'm also gonna put some complete seasoning. This is one of my absolute go-tos. This, um, how do you say it? Badia or Badia? How do y'all say that? I'm gonna look on their website and see if it's got a pronunciation for it. But I like all of their brand. I mean, all of their products that I've used. We're gonna go in with some, of course, onion powder. <clears throat> so I've got my nose, it's trying to twinkle, and some garlic powder. And you know what, let's put a little bit of pepper in it. And the oil is hot, so then we're gonna just add this to the pan. And the sweet potatoes are on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut up some parsley and I'm not gonna use the stems. I'm gonna try to cut off as much of the stems as possible. And parsley, I don't know if you guys use parsley when you're cooking, but I like to use parsley because it really does have flavor. Last year, I grew Italian parsley for the first time and when I tell you the flavor of homegrown parsley compared to what's in the store, oh my gosh. Which reminds me, I need to actually get some parsley in the ground soon because, and it gets big and it grows fast. I need to get that in the ground soon because um, I want to make sure I have a good harvest and a good amount of time to enjoy it. Oh, this smells so good. And like I said, I'm just rough chopping the, um, the parsley. Okay, this cutting board sliding is driving me nuts. All right, so my battery died. I'm back. But what I was saying, <clears throat> if I have to guess, I would say this is about mm, maybe a half a cup, a little bit more than parsley. I mean, a little bit more of the parsley. So we're just going to slide this over here. Slide our parsley over there. We're going to move that out of the way. Hope this battery does not die because y'all, how about, I don't know what my other battery is. So we're going to put some gloves on today because <clears throat> like I said I don't want to touch that meat <clears throat> I need some water got a little tickle in my throat and I need to put a top on those potatoes so let me put my gloves on and I took the peppers onions and garlic off let those cool down and I'm cooling them down because you do not want to put hot things inside of cold meat let's say that again you do not want to put hot things inside of cold meat and this is just the Purdue ground <clears throat> chicken I'm just gonna dump that in there first thing we're gonna do is season it we're going in with some onion powder and like remember I just told you, season your ground chicken and ground turkey thoroughly. It's nothing worse than you cooking a beautiful meal and then it don't have no flavor. Oh, oh I saw a TikTok. I think it was a TikTok and this is garlic powder. And um, <laughs> the guy had cooked this food and his aunt, I think it was his aunt that was eating it. And she was like, that's nasty and then the uncle was like i told you so you don't want to be that guy serving food that has no flavor <laughs> i'm gonna see if i can find that so i've put in here some 
complete seasoning on your powdered garlic powder. We're gonna put some ground pepper, some ground black pepper in. Yep, a little bit more. And I'm cooking this in a loaf pan. I know some people you actually do it on like a um uh what do you call them trays? It's not a tray. A cooling rack, but I like to put mine in a loaf pan. And we're gonna put just a smidge of the chicken bouillon. Just a smidge. Alright. Into the mix, we are going to add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Just a smidge, just a tinch. And we're going to also add a little bit of this barbecue seasoning. Barbecue seasoning, barbecue sauce. I love to put barbecue sauce in meatloaf. I've been doing it for years. And I think I may have a video up here that shows. Oh, y'all know what I forgot? My cinnamon. Because you got to put the cinnamon in the topping. Not in the meat. Sometimes I add it in the meat, but for the most part, I just add it to the topping. <clears throat> We're going to go in with breadcrumbs. And yes, I put a lot because it's ground chicken and I don't want it falling apart. And when I do one pound of meat, I always just do one, one egg. Two pounds of meat, two eggs. But today, we're going in with one. And then, here comes the part that if you're sens sensory overload for textures, this ain't the, this ain't the meal you want to be making. Because even with gloves on, you can kind of still feel those textures. And I'm looking at it to see if it looks like the seasoning really went all the way through. And, um... It's looking like I might need to add a little bit more seasoning. Alright, so I'm looking at it and it's looking like I might need to add just a little bit more seasoning. Let's rinse this hand off. It didn't touch the meat, but I don't want to just in case touch my stuff and have any type of meat or anything on my other hand because I do not want to cross contaminate. And I ain't trying to have nobody going to nobody's hospital, doctor, urgent care, none of that for salmonella poisoning. Let's get the ground black pepper. Oh, you know what? Do we have white pepper? Yes. We're going to put some white pepper on it. Put a little bit of this white pepper. And if you've never tried white pepper, you should. Because it has more flavor to me. Let's slide these braces up. It has more flavor to me than ground black pepper. Alright, I got that. Let's add a little bit more breadcrumbs because it's, it's not looking like it's going to be bound. We want it bound. I was about to say something crazy. I caught myself. <laughs> All right, let's add in the parsley. Parsley is in. Let's mix that up. We don't want to leave no, no meat left behind. All right. All right, now let's get um, our peppers. Let's see. Make sure there's no steam coming off of it. All right. Let me check on these potatoes because they are truly boiling over. Just turn the heat down just a little bit. Now let's mix this up. If you could... I was going to say, I wonder if you could make this into patties. But you really could. And you could make this into little baby, little miniature meatloafs also. Alright, this, this is going to be mixed up very nicely. And everything is being incorporated. Don't be like me and overmix your stuff. Because sometimes I will overmix. And then that, that just affects the texture of it. 
we're gonna lightly spray our loaf paint. This is what I mean. That's it. And then we're gonna take our hand and spread it. I know some people are weird about this, but it works for me. And actually, I think I might need to spray a little bit more. Because I think I might have. I did. Girl, you didn't tell me I missed the bowl. And I done sprayed it all the way over to my tea kettle. Lord. Let's spray a little bit more. All right. That's the. That's why I want it in the bowl. Because it's laying on the tea kettle. We're going to wipe that off. We'll get that in a minute. But let's go ahead and put our assemble the meatloaf into the pan. And do you shape your meatloaf by hand before you put it in the pan? Or do you do like me and put it in the pan and then shape it to the shape of the pan? How do you do your meatloaf? Meatloaf is assembled and in the pan. And we are going to now put it in. Girl, we did not preheat the oven. So we're going to sit this over here. We're going to cover it up with a paper towel until we preheat the oven. Y'all don't pay me no mind because clearly I'm all over the place in here right now. Let's make the topping for our um, meatloaf now. Is this ketchup open? Nope. Brand new bottle. I can't believe I don't have a trash bowl again. Just sit that right there all right again i'm gonna try my best to i know i'm not i was gonna say i was gonna try to measure but i just have to eye it so catch up this right here is the start of the show anyway And the barbecue sauce flavor all depends on the mood. And I'm going to taste this to see what it's like before, you know, putting it on the meatloaf. So we, we're using sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. We're going to put some cracked black pepper in it. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me move that out of the way. Did I put that in the way? A little bit more pepper, just a smidge. Then we're gonna go in with some cinnamon. Then we're gonna go in with a little bit of mustard. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. How do y'all say that? Worcestershire, Worcestershire. And we're gonna put in, and this is tomato paste. Um, I think I shared this with y'all before, but when I'm using tomato paste, if I don't need to use the whole can, I put the rest in the freezer. We're going to dip. Okay, I measure something. We got a teaspoon of tomato paste. I'm going to go in with brown sugar. Brown sugar, babe. I get high off your love. I don't know how to behave. Ooh, that's a lot of sugar. That might be too sweet. Let's see. Let us see. I think I'm going to need some vinegar. It smells good. My feelings are telling me I might need a little bit of vinegar. Just so, oh no, it's not thick. I was thinking to thin it out. Let's taste that. Oh gosh, my allergies. Okay, what we got? What we got? What we got? We need a little bit of vinegar. Yeah. I can taste the smokiness from the barbecue sauce, the sweet and the spicy. No, but let's put a little bit of, a little bit of mustard. It definitely needs some more cinnamon. I need to wipe that off. I do not like when condiments have stuff on the top. Oh my god, that grosses me out so bad. Let's see. Might not need vinegar now that I've added 
a little bit more mustard and cinnamon. Let's see. I wonder how stone ground mustard would taste as part of the topping. Still too sweet. Yep, that's it. All right, so that's enough sauce. And we're gonna put the lid on it. Cause I only put the sauce on once it's been in the oven for maybe 25, 30 minutes. So I'm gonna clean up this mess. Did I just get that on my shirt? I'm gonna clean up this mess. And then um, we'll come back. We'll get the corn together. And then we'll make a nice fresh salad. I was gonna just roast it, but I just changed my mind. Oh, whoops, I gotta clean that up. I just changed my mind once I looked at how some of these kernels look. They look dry and overdone. And I don't even know if y'all will be able to see that. I tried to show y'all the corn the last time, but it don't look all that great. And this, see if we can cut this whole end off. Girl, why is you trying to use a steak? Forget it. I was trying to use a steak knife to cut the corn. All right, we're just going to cut as much off as possible. And we're going to get the vacuum, I mean the broom, and we're going to sweep up all of the corn that's on the floor just in case someone's asking or wondering, is she going to clean that corn up off the floor? Absolutely, because clearly y'all don't realize I got issues with dirt. <laughs> a little bit of OCD, just a little bit. My family will tell you. Me and my dad, we both have it really bad. It's not like super, super bad, but it's enough to know. Like, I can tell when stuff has been moved. But I'm not one of those people who's OCD and goes off when stuff is moved. Because I know it can be put up. I know it can be found. If the person who moved it knows where it is, that's fine. Just put it back. Put stuff back where it came from. But if you can't find it, then we got a problem. Now, one thing I don't like is stuff all over the place. That drives me nuts. And my daughter showed me a, um, a post where it says that, um, I think my sister sent it to her. It said that um, I closed my child's room. My, I think it said I closed the door to my child's room to make my house feel cleaner. <laughs> that would be me. I close her door all the time. I never leave her door open. Like when she leaves, if she leaves out for the day, like when she's home, and she leaves her door open, I close it. Cause to me it's chaos, but to her she understands it. And so, you know, sometimes, whoopsie. Sometimes we, um, we as parents, even of young adults, um, you know, we have to have boundaries. And I know that some people are probably in the comments like, no, nah, this is my house. It's gonna be the way it's gonna be. But here's my thought process. My thought process is, where did that corn go? Because it's driving me nuts that it fell on the floor. See, I couldn't just let it sit until I sweep. I had to pick it up. So here's my thought process. If, you, if it's not hurting anyone, it's not causing harm, I just let it be. I used to not be that way. I used to have to have it cleaned up, um, but after a while, I was like, girl, pick your battles. She's a great student. This, even this is before she even left to go to college. I, it would drive me nuts. Now, one thing I don't have the patience for is dishes in the room. That's one thing that, ooh, I lose it. Don't have no dishes just sitting up in the room. Because you can eat upstairs, just don't leave your dishes. So, one day, I was just like sitting down. And I was like, girl, why are you like losing all of your marbles over something so trivial as to her room not being clean. So I stopped tripping out about it and was like, I just don't just don't ask me to come in there. If you're not sick, don't ask me to come in there because the way my anxiety is set up, I can't handle it. So we're gonna now make our salad. And if you notice, I do not have a cocktail right now and I don't have a mocktail because 
I couldn't figure out what I wanted to make. So after I figure out what I want to make, then I'm going to come back and make the cocktail. It'll probably be after the food finishes cooking, but we still going to have a cocktail and a mocktail. All right, this is just um, some spring mix. And I'm going to rinse it and chop it. And put it in there. That's some baby spinach. Did I get the wrong one? No, that's the right one. But why is the spinach so light skinned? I know I shouldn't have said that, but I like my spinach leaves to be a little bit darker. We're gonna rinse the salad and then we're gonna transfer it up here to chop it. Because I don't want the salad to be super wet in the bowl. And then another way to keep your lettuce and your salad greens from turning fast when you rinse your salad and stuff out, put a paper towel in the bottom of the bowl before you, that way when you store it, um, any water that's in it, it will collect in the bottom. All right, so the salad has been dried as much as I can get it dry. And that, that pulled out a lot of the water and then we're just gonna flip it. We're just gonna do a good rough chop just so that when we eat the salad, we can get some nice bite-sized pieces instead of like huge chunks of lettuce and huge chunks of the spinach. It's not so much a chopped salad, even though I'm rough chopping it. <laughs> I'm debating if I want to put this in the salad spinner just to see if I can drain some more of that water off, but it's fine. All right, so we have the salad all nicely rough chopped. We're gonna put that in a bowl. Then we're gonna add some onion. We're gonna add red onion. Sometimes I put the vegetables on the side, but since this salad will probably be eaten today, I'm just gonna add everything right to the bowl. Okay. Y'all already know what I'm gonna do. Shake it up. Shake it up, baby, now. Twist and shout. That ain't how you twist. This is how you twist. I don't know what I just did. I don't know what I just did. Alright, so we got the onion. And you know what? I might just layer it. Just leave it layered like this. And then as we scoop it out. Because we're going to use the salad tongs anyway. Just get a nice scoop of everything. I don't know. We'll see what I decide once I get through all of this. Next, we're going to do some carrots. And for those of you who don't know and do, are new here, I am not a huge carrot fan. But we're going to do it for the sake of me getting healthy and I need to get a new um a new um what's this thing called scraper because my other one used to go this way which I prefer this one don't go that way I mean it does but it doesn't really look it don't clean nothing I don't know it takes too long for me to do it that way I don't have the patience of Job so we're gonna do it like this. And I have a thing that I can julian, make julian pieces, but um, I don't feel like taking it out. We're just gonna do it. Let's move that salad over there so y'all can see. Um, we're just gonna do some nice thin slices. All right, potatoes, hey. Hey! Hold on. I don't want huge, huge chunks of carrots like that. And they're nice, they're nice and thin, so I'm just halving the slices that I made. Soon. Soon and very soon. We're not going to see the king, but I am gonna show you the changes that have occurred in the garden. And tomatoes. 
but what I was saying was um, I am going to put down some landscapers fabric put the little pins in it so it can secure it then I will dig holes cut some holes in for um, where I'm gonna actually put stuff in the ground and then the other things that are in pots they're gonna sit around it and I'm gonna like kind of decorate it put like some pavers in so I can have a walkway because I've always wanted a walkway back there um, I just haven't taken the time and to be honest I didn't have the money to do all of that because that stuff is really expensive y'all know me in the parsley I told y'all I told y'all the other day when I made that salad how much I like parsley in my salads I already told y'all that yeah, we're going to shake this up because we want all of this goodness mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's put the top on and shake it up. Look at that fancy bowl again. Y'all know it. Y'all know it. That fancy bowl. Did y'all go get y'all one? Let's go ahead and take the meat out so that we can put the sauce on. Potatoes are done. And we're gonna go ahead and separate them so that we can make the mashed sweet potatoes. The corn is almost done, the salad is done. And the worst thing that could have happened just happened. I opened up the door and a fly came in. Hate flies and there it is. I'm about to be fighting for my life. All right, so the meatloaf is out and that's just paprika on top. And we're gonna go ahead and slather some of this sauce on the top, baby and put it back in the oven. Silicone spoon or silicone brush. Get that on there really good. Now here's the thing, if you cook yours on a um, cooling rack, I think the benefit of that is that you can get the sauce all the way around but my method, you can only get the sauce on the top. But another good thing, because we have extra sauce on the plate, you can put as much sauce as you want. So we've layered the sauce on here. And then we're gonna pop it back in the oven for it to finish cooking. And there's the meatloaf with the sauce on it. Lord, I hope that fly don't come back. I hope it go ahead and find a corner somewhere and just go back and go on and meet its maker. I know that sounds horrible, but I think flies are disgusting. All right, so we're gonna separate these skins from the potato. And again, I, I whenever I'm fooling with hot potatoes, hot potato, hot potato, I always like to put on some gloves just to put like a little barrier between my skin and the potato. Cause um, and it's still super hot. Jesus, hot. <laughs> Jesus, Mary, and Joseph too. All right. So one potato down. And this is how I um do my potatoes when I make my sweet potato pies too. Sometimes I'll bake them, but it's very rare that I bake the potatoes. I, Jesus, that's hot. I normally boil them. Oh my God, it's hot. If y'all, can y'all see that steam? I had the potato way over there. I don't know why I did that. Oh my God, it's hot. <laughs> Whoo, hot. Mm. And I know I should have waited for them to cool, but I want to get all of the stuff in them while they're super hot. We're just going to add a little bit of uh, vanilla flavoring. I'm going to add some cinnamon. And essentially, they're kind of like yams, but not some brown sugar, babe. Oh, I just knocked my my brown, I mean my flavoring over. Y'all, hold on one second. That was not supposed to happen at all. Y'all know if vanilla flavoring. I don't care if it's Im imitation. I was gonna say emanation. I don't care if it's imitation vanilla extract or what. 
but vanilla period it's expensive i ain't got time to be wasting this stuff no ma'am no ma'am ma'am me and my sister be saying that all right now let me get my secret weapon let's cover this up just in case little low fly try to come back and my secret weapon a little bit of bourbon just a smidge it just adds a really good flavor to it and we're gonna just mash them i got that from um somebody on food network one time they put a smidge of bourbon in theirs and then and what you can do is if you feel like you put too much bourbon you just add a little bit more vanilla and a little bit more brown sugar and just like that we got mashed sweet potatoes let me taste it though because you don't want to taste the bourbon at all And because it's mashed sweet potatoes, there will be some strings in it, okay? No, no strings belong in the sweet potato pie. No strings belong in yams. Mashed sweet potatoes, it's kind of hard to avoid the strings, but you want to cook the potatoes so that the strings that are in there kind of like melt in your mouth instead of you feeling like you need to do like this. I'm gonna add a little bit of my um, vanilla bean paste. It must be hot because this normally is thick. This is vanilla bean paste. Hold on, I'm gonna show y'all in a second. This is the vanilla bean paste. And this is what it looks like. Really rich, really dark. It does add character to what you're cooking. And I'm going to add just a little bit more brown sugar. And then the sweet potatoes will be done. That should be good. It needs nothing else. So we have our corn with some pepper and a little bit of sugar. Now let's take the meatloaf out of the oven. All right, y'all. So my camera died. So we're back with the phone. We have our corn. We have our salad, our sweet potatoes, and our meatloaf. So dinner is done. Now let's come up with a cocktail and a mocktail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wanna know me, I stay low-key, all gas, no brakes, baby, let them hoes sleep Body on to make your girl OD, I get in my way, never out of my lane Feel like you the one and I'm on one, so what it's gonna be? Baby squad up, we finna go deep, riding on a team, got what you need Baby, won't you keep me company? Alright, y'all, I'm back. Dinner was good. And he had the meatloaf, but I just had like a, the um, meatless, the meat substitute crumbles. I put a little tomato sauce in it, some peppers and onions. Quick, easy, delicious. All right, so while I was decompressing, I came up with what I was gonna make as far as a cocktail. You just saw me making the blueberry simple syrup. So easy, and you can make that simple syrup using any fruit that you want. If you wanted a fig simple syrup, if you wanted a, a, berry, a berry blend simple syrup, you could just throw berries in there with the sugar and the water. Easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Speaking of lemons, we're gonna use lemons because we need fresh lemon juice. So I'm making a blueberry basil mocktail and a blueberry basil margarita. Here's my fresh basil. I'm going to use those blueberries from the simple syrup that I just made. I'm going to use those. I'm going to put those in here. We're going to muddle the blueberries, the lemon juice, the basil. We're going to add some blueberry simple syrup. But since it's not super sweet, 
we're gonna add some maple syrup I think that's gonna be really good we're gonna muddle all muddle all of that then we're gonna pour it in the glass with some ice we're gonna actually add some ice to the shaker shake it up and add it to the glass and we're gonna add, top it with the club soda that's gonna be our mocktail our cocktail same exact ingredients much like the cocktail last week only difference is we are going to add tequila to this one so that's our cocktail and our mocktail so let's get started all right let me move some things out of your way so that you can see what's going on here let me get a spoon because i don't want to stick my hands in that because they're cooked and they're sticky all right so you're just going to take i would say go for a good tablespoon and a half to muddle yeah that's gonna be about a good tablespoon and a half and then we're gonna go in with um, one sprig of basil and I want to take the leaves now trick for you those of you who want to garden or like to garden you can take this stem trim the ends off and put it in water to propagate it so that you can start getting your own basil plant. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to save both of them. So let me see. That's an extra leaf. So we have our leaves of our basil leaves. We have our blueberries. And let me see my recipe here. How much simple syrup? I'm going to use. Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, we're going to go in with two ounces of um the blueberry simple syrup and then we're going to go in with one ounce of maple syrup that's gonna be about half of that and like i said i'm using both of these because neither of them are super super sweet so we have our simple syrup we have our maple syrup let's cover that up before we make a mess and then let's go ahead and squeeze some of this lemon juice in and i may shave some um some of the zest in it once i put it in a glass i think that'll just give it a little bit of character and so we're gonna go in now this lemon normally i get about a good ounce and a half to two ounces out of each lemon this lemon is huge so i'm gonna do juice from one half lemon taste it and if it needs a little bit more of the acidity, I'll squeeze lemon juice in the glass and then I'll stir it. But I think I'm going to be good because it's putting out quite a bit of juice. All right. So there we have our lemon. And I'm going to put some of that flesh in there. Get some of that in there. And let's slide it down. And let's muddle all of this up. You really want to muddle it to wake those leaves up. Get that basil flavor in with those blueberries and the lemon. Get it all mixed up nicely. It smells so good. Just enough. Now we're going to add some ice so that we can make it cold. Now I probably could have used a smaller um, glass. I probably don't need this huge margarita glass. So I'm thinking about changing it to a martini glass. That's a strong maybe. I think we're going to not. <laughs> I just changed my mind as soon as I said it. And remember, shake it until your shaker frosts over. You want it nice and cold. All right. And if you want, you could rim the glass. But y'all know how I am about rimming glasses. Oh gosh, it's so pretty. So super pretty. It made quite a bit. And I'm making quite a mess. It's all over the counter. And then we're just going to top it with some club soda. And we're going to borrow one of these extra basil leaves and we're just gonna float the leaf right on top and can we you know we can't get any garnish out of that i was gonna try to garnish it with a piece of lemon but we can't because i don't want to destroy the lemon that i need for the other drink oh that is so good okay so 
Mmm. What would I do different? For me, it is a little sweet. So, for myself, hopefully some comes out. I would add some more juice. I'm going to add that. Ooh. I'm going to add some of the flesh of the juice. I mean, flesh of the juice. Flesh of the lemon to give that. Mm-hmm. That cut a little bit of that sweetness. But it's perfect for um, a cocktail. I mean, a mocktail. So now we're going to go ahead and dump this and we're going to make the cocktail. So next we're going to just dump the rest of these blueberries. I want to taste it. Taste the blueberries. Mm, they're good. Oh, they're really good. Okay. We got the blueberries. <clears throat> Let's see. We need a leaf for our garnish. So we'll go with that leaf. We're going to put in all of these. These leaves look kind of ratty. We're going to put those in. Let's squeeze in the juice of this lemon. This one is not going to be as sweet. And that's because we're going to use that tequila in it. So that tequila is going to cut some of the sweetness. So what we're going to do is instead of two ounces of, of the blueberry simple syrup, we are going to use just one and a half ounces. We're going to use one and a half ounce of the blueberry. And we're going to do one, one ounce of simple syrup. Just one. All right, that's that. Then we're gonna go in with two ounces. We're not gonna be like that. We're gonna do one and a half ounces of this tequila. I don't know what I'm trying to prove. Nothing. All right, so we got that in there. And now let's muddle it all up. Mix those up. Girl, if you don't put that top on, you know how clumsy you are. And you be done knock that syrup over and that will be a mess. All right, so we have our syrups all closed up. Now let's get to muddling. All right, I feel like we've muddled that good. Now we're going to add some ice. What time is it? I want it to be very cold. All right, now let's top it off. Let's wipe some of that off. All right, we're gonna put the top on and we're gonna shake, shake it up, baby, now. Twist and shout. Come on, come on, come on, baby, now. Was that, did Rudy sing that in the Cosby show? I can't remember. I know some kids sung it in some show, some TV show. Who this cold? Let's see, let's see. Let's pour, pour it up, pour it up. Ooh, that's cold. Now let's pour a little bit of club soda. Created some nice bubbles from the shake. And garnish it with our basil leaf. And here's our blueberry basil margarita. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that's got tequila in it and I don't taste the tequila at all? That's them dangerous drinks. That is so good. Dangerously delicious. Well, we have a mocktail and a cocktail. So good. Both of them are delicious. One has tequila, one does not. I hope y'all have enjoyed and I hope you make it. I hope that you try to make these cocktails, cocktail or mocktail or both. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you next week. From my kitchen to yours, from my heart to yours. I love you guys. Have an amazing remainder of the week and I'll see you soon. Good night.